Um, war does come up in my books quite a lot, um, and there's a very good reason for it. Um, I was born in 1943, and some of you will know that that was just about two years before the end of the Second World War, so I have no memories of the Second World War at all. I did not win the war. I was a baby, but just after the war was over, I was brought up in, in London, near a place called Earl's Court, and the houses around, many of them were bombed. My school, which was a place called St. Matthias off the Warwick Road, the playground looked out onto a bomb site. We played in bomb sites. London was a blitzed city where every you looked, age five, six, there were remnants of that war all around you, the ruins. And then about six or seven, I don't remember when, I began to realize that actually war didn't destroy just buildings. It destroyed lives too and families. My own family was split up because of the war, which you might think, well, how did that happen? Well, I'll tell you. Um, many, many families, the man went away to the war and the mother stayed at home to look after the children. And so when you're living apart for two, three, four years, the same person doesn't come back from the war. And for the person at home, um, they need comfort, they're lonely. And so many, many soldiers came back to find their wives had decided to live with someone else. And that's what happened in my case. So the war, in a way, blew my family apart. It also killed one of my uncles, my uncle Peter. So he was a photograph on the mantelpiece. He was killed when he was 21. And he was just a photograph looking out of a frame all my childhood. So imagine this little boy looking up at this photograph all the time, seeing this uncle, everyone in the family, my mother, who was, he was her brother. My mother worshipped him, loved him, missed him, grieved for him cried for him, so I saw that as a little boy, and I, I realized then what war did, it killed people, you know. And I think that awareness, when, when you have that awareness very, very young of what it does, you never forget it. And so I, I grew up really both fascinated by what war does to people, why wars happen, it came fairly quickly in my adult life to the conclusion that they shouldn't happen, and then to the realization that whether I like it or not, they do go on happening. And that coffins come home from uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, and there are more families grieving out there with uncles in photographs who no one's going to know, and not only on our side. This happens every time a bomb blasts in Afghanistan or in Iraq or in Syria. It wrecks lives, wrecks societies. And is the greatest curse I think mankind has brought upon the earth. There's no question about that. That and what we are doing to the planet, I suppose, in terms of uh, destroying uh, this, the, the, the wonderful nature that we have. Those two things, we've made war on uh, our fellow creatures and on the atmosphere, and we've made war on each other. We're a very destructive species. And war is the most evident sort of uh, part of that, really. And for me, the most important thing, I think, with any war story, is to write about the possibility of hope, the possibility of, of a time when there isn't a war. So reconciliation um, is key to my stories. They're not really about war, they're about a hope for peace. Um, that's why I write them. We're coming up to, yes, 100 years since the First World War began in August 1914. Um, that was a war in which 10 million men died 10 million horses. Um, we don't know how many civilians died. We've simply no idea at all. We know there were many. There were bombs, most people don't realize it, but there were bombs dropped by Zeppelins on London um, during the First World War, which killed many, many people. One fell on a school in North London and destroyed dozens and dozens of lives. And, and that's gone on and gone on. And we know that as a result of the First World War, 20 years later, there was another war, even more terrible than that in terms of numbers, 20 million killed worldwide. Um, it's very difficult to write about these things if you're writing about them for young people because you certainly don't want to uh, shock too much, traumatize, but you do want to tell it because we have to know it. And why do we have to know it? Well because whether we like it or not children now <coughs> find out about these things anyway. They have televisions, they have videos and you people, you young ones, uh, you've seen the images of war. And what your books, your literature should do, it seems to me, is to visit that same place, go to that same place, but do it in a way um, which is enabling you to understand better 
what really happens in a war, why wars happen, and what happens to the individual, particularly to the individual during the war. So for instance, let's talk about the worst side of war. And the worst side must be either the trench warfare in the First World War or perhaps the Holocaust in the Second World War. Let's talk about the Holocaust. If you just mention numbers, if you say six million Jews and others were murdered by the Nazis in that war, uh, gassed, shot, whatever, six million. All it does is you say, well, six million, six million. But if you tell the story of one of them, if you read Anne Frank, for instance, her diary, that takes you much, much closer to the heart of how it was. So I've done that when I've written about the Holocaust, and I have in a story of mine called The Mozart Question. I do it through uh, one small boy finding out about the fact that his parents were there. And then when it comes to the First World War, um, I wanted to tell a story not about the winning of one side or the winning of another side, um, I wanted to tell a story about the universal suffering of that war and of all wars. And so I thought we'll have a neutral character telling the story. And the neutral character is this horse, it's Joey. Joey is a farm horse from my village in Devon, a British horse, goes away with the British army, fights in the British cavalry, listens to British soldiers talking, is captured by the Germans very, very quickly because cavalry charges weren't that brilliant. At the beginning of the First World War, there were too many, too much barbed wire and too many machine guns, they didn't work very well. So he's captured, and then he listens to the German language and German soldiers, and he winters on a French farm and listens to French people talking. And all the time, through his eyes and through his head, you see and observe and feel this war, the horror of it going on all around you. And so again, it's one person's take on the war. And I think that's what's important. You have to individualize it, personalize it, make it matter, because finally, Young people growing up today are going to, at some point or other, they're going to be making up their minds about some crisis in the future, about whether or not it's a good idea to go and fight about this, that and the other. And you should be equipped emotionally and in your knowledge and understanding of what's happened in history so that you can actually make your opinion and your vote count. It's very important who we are. So I think it's an important subject. Um, I wish I hadn't written about it so much because every time I've written a book like uh, the Butterfly Lion, or, or Farm Boy, or any of them, uh, Private Peaceful. All of them are searing. All of them uh, make you feel very sad when you're writing them. They have to, otherwise it's not worthwhile doing. Um, and I'm writing one at the moment. I'm writing a story called Lucy Lost at the moment, which is about the sinking of a great ship in the First World War. Um, and it's, it's not easy. It makes you feel wretched. But it's important to do that. <laughs>